Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 26 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning from uh, Roswell Dragway, uh, Alien City Dragway here. Rob Coon with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's race day. Yeah, this sounds like a lot of fun. Now, uh, we'd love to invite the folks to come on out. If you've never been out to the Dragway here and, and seen, a, seen a night of racing, then uh, maybe make this weekend your first opportunity to come check some racing out. Exactly. Uh, tonight is a uh, street car race. Okay. Uh, test and tune for the big hot rods. Come out and and uh, so those guys are all tweaking and getting ready for, for tomorrow. But our, but our street cars, our Mustangs and Camaros and stuff you see going up and down Main Street here, mm-hmm. they come out the younger generation, and uh, we just let them burn the tires off. Absolutely, this uh, well, that's the next. I mean, this is how you build passion for the sport and things, and 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 yeah, if you're a, if you're a person that loves cars, you know it's it's you know. You're out there with your Mustang, your Camaro, whatever it is. Plus, it's a great, yeah. safe environment. They're Take off it out the to the dragway. They're not exactly. Yeah. yeah. The only thing about our dragway right now, they're doing some construction. Okay. Right there at Hobson and Y.O. Crossing. You're going to have to go down to the next exit to get in. Okay. To take a right, and then you got to work your way back through. You'll, If you go out there, you'll see how it's. They'll have a like signs yeah. whatever telling people. But where hey. you usually turn to come in, you're going to have to go down to the next intersection and take a right. Okay. And work your way back that way. It's okay. Very simple. But uh, uh, but yeah, if you bumped. come at the right time, just kind of follow the herd. They'll oh, yeah. all be kind of going that way. So Absolutely. Just, just get get in the group and merge on in. So, but um, so so really, so tonight's going to be fun because now you get to see friends and neighbors and oh, yeah. folks. And it's a friendly night. Bringing the rides out, coming on out, real community thing. Sure. But if you kind of want to get a preview of some of the, the big boy Nitro stuff. They'll be out there tonight doing some test and tuning, and then tomorrow night. Is game on for yeah, them. Yeah, game, game on. Nice. So so if you kind of want to see. And I'm guessing, and this is where I, I love drag racing as a sport and things. It's one of those sports where you get to, like, interact with the crews and things. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, Obviously, you go to an NFL game or whatever. You're not going to hang out in the sidelines and strike up a conversation with the coach or nothing. Well, I go to <laughs> I go to Phoenix and different big race tracks, and I can I can walk through the pits and shake hands with John Forrest or yeah. any of the big guys. You go to an NASCAR race, which I've been to, you can't get within a hundred yards of yeah. those drivers. Yeah, that, they're that, they're like protected, like with the NASCAR Secret Service. Sure, yeah, it's but, seen and not heard, but. Or whatever. Uh, yeah. NHRA, that's why it was built that way. Yeah. Uh, Fan friendly, sign autographs. Well, and and a lot of it, especially here like this, you can kind of walk through the the pits, the garage area. Oh yeah. And and so if you're a car person and you want to talk 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 shop with some of these folks, they love doing that and love you know maybe you're interested in getting into the sport and you know and you're like what kind of investment am I talking about here? What am I doing? Start picking brains down there and seeing what uh, what what's involved and what's going on there. And, and of course, if you're just a you know one of you know dad and bringing the kids out and say hey, let's go check out some cool cars and dad and kid sitting there talking with some of the drivers and some of the mechanics and sure. things like that. Our last race, <clears throat> I've got a '55 Chevy I race, and uh, people come by and take pictures of it. And a family of four, two little girls came by and I opened it up and let the kids sit in it, and, yeah. and uh, they got pictures and. They just thought I was the the handiest thing since a pocket on a shirt, you know. But as a, that's as, the way it goes with everybody out there. Everybody yeah. does that. As a man now, but once a boy, oh, I absolutely. know exactly how cool a big a deal it is. Be you know, prop you up behind the wheel of a race car oh, and yeah. get all that cool stuff. It is so much fun and sure. And of course, um, you know, it's drag race in action. I mean, if you've ever been to a drag, I got to experience it for the first time when I was like a teenager because I had a friend. Um, whose dad was uh, he? He raced funny cars and all that stuff, and that was he was um, he didn't do like the backyard stuff. He was he, and he wasn't quite John Force level and all that, but but, but he was one right. of those guys that top sportsman. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was he he put some coin into his investment here with his cars. Sure, he had a he had an old Vega that he first did it with and blew that thing up, and then uh, he ended up running a '68 Camaro that he completely fixed up into. Oh, yeah. For, into a into one of these hot rods and, and ran it for years. Well, I guarantee you, there's cars in this town, and there's a lot of race cars in this town. You just don't see them too much, except on race day. But uh, guys have got seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars in their cars, plus their tow rigs. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got the big motor homes with the double stacker trailers, and you know, you can tie up a couple hundred thousand dollars real quick. Absolutely. In a in an operation. Now, me, I've got a. 
a 20 foot enclosed trailer and a 55 Chevy and a pickup. And, uh, I'm kind of down on the, uh, the low end of the spectrum, <laughs> but, you know, poor boy racing, but yeah, you're more some, in the hobbyist, not right. in the serious, you know, there's, there's some serious drag racers and we get some coming over here from Texas that are just crazy fast and good racers. Yeah. And of course our racers are too. We'll, We'll put our racers up against anybody. Absolutely. But here's the part I love, too, is is like you get to learn kind of the, in, the in, in, intricacies of the sport. And right. you realize there's a lot more strategy involved in things than people realize. People, most people just think start a light and start racing. And no, 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 no. There's exactly. a lot more to that. It's all about hitting that what they call the Christmas tree just exactly. right and doing all that stuff. Um, and, and and so it's, it's as much... You know, it, because let's face it, all these cars, these drivers are all pretty fast. They're all pretty good. The difference is, you know, hitting your marks right, hitting, doing the right, uh, do, making sure you don't miss those beats, miss the right things. And I don't, I don't know all the exact stuff, well, but I, I understand it, it is really this, you know, it, it's, you do these things by the numbers, it's going to be sweet. I'm an old guy. My reaction times have slowed down so much <laughs> and you end up racing some 20 something kid and you're. 70 ish, maybe a little older. Yeah. Uh, they're going to kill you every time. Yeah. Unless you just dial, you well, hit one lucky. Well, and that's where the being smarter, you know, why the, the, the little bit of wisdom does uh, sometimes trump oh, the there's youth. Some, there's some tricks you can play. <laughs> there's some tricks. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious just um, because, like, we're talking money and things like that. But, but really, I know when it, in terms of racing, cars break, con- you know what I mean? There's so. When it, it comes to preparing for a race, like how much, like what's the, and I'm sure each each team has a different philosophy on this, but like I imagine the money invest because at some point you're like, okay, we blew something, we're gonna have to replace it before the next race, but you don't know that's gonna happen, so you kind of got to keep a stable of parts and and things. I mean, obviously there's you know, tendencies for certain parts to break over others. So you're like, I'm going to need to have more of those. Right, right, those. Right. But, but how do you gauge that when you go into a weekend saying like, do I just, do I bring a whole nother engine if I need, I mean, like, what do you know is like how much to bring and what's overkill or what's not enough? Well, most guys like myself, I have a shop and, uh, throughout the years, many years I've accumulated hand-me-downs and I've bought stuff that I didn't need, but I'll need next year. Uh, the main thing is oil filters, spark plugs gotcha stuff like that you know you got to keep that oil changed you got to keep them spark plugs gotcha changed out i didn't know if uh, you had to bring like a whole garage of the napa parts with you or well, something you know case, my, or? my my theory is if i broke it out there I, i'll just bring it home gotcha fix it monday morning and race live to race another if it day. breaks that bad then you're probably out right for the day. now gotcha. I, I take my tools out there and i if there's something loose or something i can fix real quick gotcha but i'm i don't want to spend my whole time out there underneath the car <laughs> right when i could be watching other cars go down the track sure for you it's fun and you're like you know i can do that at home sure and now i'm going to sit in the stands and be a spectator well i the last two days i've had my motor totally tore apart and it'll be back together by noon today <laughs> ready to go so well and then again people like that this is labor like yourself you know they're the guys that you know, they see a, 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 a garage floor full of parts, and they're like, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Not, not oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing I'd like to say about our track, you know, we're kind of on life support right now. Uh, we were told to be off that track by January of next year, of gotcha. 23. Uh, they had other plans for that property out there. We've had that track since 1986 out there. Rick Calloway built that track. Mm-hmm. And before that, it was out at the uh, – airport gotcha uh i've been racing there since the late 60s but we've kind of hit a these crossroads now to where we're hoping the city will let us keep our track open uh you know the roswell's there's not a whole lot of entertainment Mm -hmm. here in roswell we don't have big concerts and you know, big baseball teams and football we're not a mecca for that stuff right passing through Uh, type town you know unless you like to play golf you can bowl you can go to the movies and that's you're pretty much limited we've had this track in operation since 1986 uh we've had some tremendous success out there uh it set vacant for three years Mm -hmm. when when the alien city dragway took it back over 
And when you let one sit for three years, it just kills the track. Absolutely, I the, imagine it just fell apart. You know, there was six of us went in on this. We had we formed a board, which I'm the president, and we started rebuilding this track. Uh, now our board's down to three, but uh, we still every Saturday. Last Saturday we were out pouring concrete on the starting line because the drivers complained there was a hump there, so we cut the hump out and and, and fixed that. Uh, we have spent lots and lots of money out there and we're hoping the city will give us a reprieve and let us keep our track out there. sure you're like you're trying to take care of it and let's oh and, you know it, it, it and it's the best track by far in the state of new mexico albuquerque's got a track demi's got a track we butt heads with hobbs they have a track we don't butt heads but we're you know they competing for the same we, dollar ex- exactly yeah, yeah competing for the same dollar uh, Odessa's got a track, uh, Amarillo's got a track, but if you'll ask any of these drivers that come over here, we got the nicest pits. They're all paved. We, we got a good concession. We got, where else can you, the facilities are good facility. Where else can you go? And at the end of the track, you look up and there's two 747s parked. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what's cool about it. It is a track. cool backdrop. Uh, we got planes coming in and out, you know, uh, it it is it's it's a it's a good track it's a fast track, and uh, we just hope the city sees in their wisdom to let us keep it. Sure, we've had it for a long time. Out and there. I know that's been kind of a uh, something that's been in the papers and it is an issue here right. in the media for the last year or two here right. on this. And and like you said, it's and it's it's a uh, there's a lot of support to keep the drag way here and do all that. You know they have plans, and I think. Um, I, I, so really what, you know, as a community, if you want to see and want to continue to see races coming out here and all this stuff, uh, two things you need to do. One is, you know, uh, write to your city council, things like that, talk for your support. And two, come out and support races. Come exactly. on out and watch a race here. Come and bring the family. Hang out uh, an evening for fun in the pits and, and watching some great races and seeing uh seeing uh what this sport's all about and uh come and have some fun you know well i know these these cars here that we have coming in these these pickups and funny cars and stuff if you look around roswell i'm not sure exactly where all they're going to be parked today but they'll be parked around businesses okay. around roswell so might be hanging out uh, up about... and down main street you'll see these things somewhere okay uh, so get out and talk to these guys if you have to oh, be yeah. there visiting and, and you see the, the team hanging out Come and uh, chew the fat with them for a little bit here. I think South Albertsons is going to have one. Powell Tower, Tire, down south. Okay. Uh, different places. If you drive, like say, drive down Main Street, you'll see their display set up. And, and uh, you know, this is uh, tonight's, again, a test and tune. And these big cars will be out testing and then tomorrow night it, it gets down to the brass tacks. Yeah. And, uh, Gates will open at six o'clock uh, tonight. Right. And uh, they'll start racing out there about seven, so right. you can get you a good spot, maybe get some dinner, and, and get and you we got food for the trucks race. out there. There's there'll be plenty of goodies. Yeah, you go away hungry, it's kind of your own fault. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, um, as far as recommendations, as far as like like hearing protection things like that, do you recommend? That kind of stuff, and because uh, I know it, it does get a little loud, especially oh, if you're hanging out ex- by the burnout zone, especially and all that. with these big cars. Bring yeah. some earmuffs <clears throat> or earplugs. Uh, we got what a lot of people do is they come out in their pickups and they can back up on the west end of the track, and uh, you got a basically an eighth of a mile of parking there. Mm-hmm. Put your lawn chair in there. Put your uh, cooler with your. We hope. Non-alcoholic yeah, beverages. Put your favorite uh, sodas uh, <laughs> and waters and fruit and juices. and uh, put a lawn chair back there. Or we got some good bleachers. Yeah. But if you want to just stay in your car, you pick up back up there. Make it like and, a little family. Oh yeah. Picnic and, night out and, kind of uh, thing. And enjoy the races. Yeah, it, it's a good time. Yeah. And, and we put on a good show out there. What's a uh, cost to get in and all that stuff? Fifteen dollars. Very good for a night of entertainment. What about um if if there's some racers around listening and want to get in on uh, tonight's races? A is it is is that still available? And B, what does sure. that cost? Uh, <clears throat> tonight, uh, it's thirty dollars. Okay, for you to come out and bring what you brought, basically r- run what you brought. Yeah, and you know these guys, they they'll make so many runs out there because they enjoy it so much, and they just burn them tires off. And and you know, I wish that I had a program like that when I started racing because I went from you know right into the steep competition 
kind of stuff. Sure. These guys got thrown to the wolves a little bit. Right. Yeah. These guys, they, they race side by side. One's a 13 second car. One's a 15 second car, but they do it all night long. Yeah. But you'll get to see some guys you're going to race tomorrow with real race cars. Sure. The, you know, full out race cars that will uh, be out there tonight and then tomorrow. For but sure. I would even argue when you, you know, when you, you know, bring what you brought, you know, bring what you run, you know, kind of, if you've got that mindset, you, you're going to see that's also the future of the sport. I oh, mean, yeah, absolutely. some are just going to keep doing it as a hobby and have fun. And, and that's awesome. We want that. But one or two of those, especially if they're like 18 year old kids or something that are looking to, for a career as a driver in the, in this industry, whether it's drag racing or, or round, you know, dirt racing or oval track racing, whatever it is, you know, they're, they're learning their chops here. They're doing it in their own cars and they're learning timing and shifting and hitting that Christmas tree right. just right and all those skill sets. So when they put them in something that's got a little more, uh, a little more heat underneath the hood, then uh, they're, they're better trained. Well, and you equipped. know, NHRA has got a class called junior dragster. You can start at seven years old. It's a, it's a mini dragster with a Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine to start with. Oh, cool. And then it, as you so get it's older, like a go kart on steroids kind of it, thing. You, the, <laughs> the, as you get older and, and your age group, those cars are wicked fast yeah. cars. Uh, I'm like, can I drive one? I kind of want to. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love to drive one, but uh, I, I weigh more than the car. Well, that's the problem. Uh, but uh, they don't make these, them a... these kids will cut your heart out on that Christmas tree. They, at eight years old, they're cutting perfect lights. And, and uh, of course, it's a family sport. Mom and dad bring them. And, and then what's nice about that is they go up to another class, and then they, they start driving dragsters with big dragsters with V8 motors uh, Erica Enders, the the reigning pro stock champ uh, in NHRA, she started out in a junior dragster. All of these younger group right now mm -hmm. started out in the junior dragster categories and uh, have made a living off of it and, and done very well. But uh, these kids are ruthless when it comes to cutting cutting good lights and, and running consistent. Sure. I'm wondering if gaming has trained them. Ah, you know, like, you know, yeah. with all the gaming oh, and that hand-eye coordination. You know, we as far had as a, getting that light just right and hitting it on the right post there, yeah. A few years ago, we had the world champion uh, junior dragster driver and owner, you know, Bobby Jones, whatever. Had They come in a tractor trailer, and it says, you know, whatever his name was, Bobby Jones, uh, world champion junior dragster. Well, they were on their way to Denver to the, the national meet up there for junior dragsters. Well, I thought, well, let's just run through Roswell, pick up some pocket change, and take, move on. Yeah, and move on. You Clean know. house here. Clean, yeah, show them how it's done. Uh, first round, a little eight-year-old girl put this kid on the trailer so fast. <laughs> you know, he, uh, that's the fun part about oh, racing, yeah. though. Too is it's you know you hear football any given Sunday. It's very true in drag racing too. You could come out here and have the baddest, coolest car on the planet. But if you don't hit the hit hit the hit the marks right, yeah, right, you're you're gonna be in the spec in the stands watching the rest of the night there. If and, and for people that don't know about our drag racing, that track will be prepped. Uh, tonight will be prepped pretty decent. Tomorrow it'll be to where you could not walk on the starting line, and your shoes not get pulled off your feet. That's gotcha. how sticky it'll be. We put some com uh, rosin compound on it, liquid compound. We mix it with uh, methanol, and uh, it's a uh, sticky, very sticky. And these big cars love it. And yeah. well, any car out should there. make some good burnouts oh, yeah. at the beginning. And it's, I, I'm not going to lie; some of my favorite part of the race is before the race even starts, watching them burn out. Oh, yeah. the tires warmed up and yeah. everything. Yeah, because they'll hit it hard, especially when you get dragsters and funny oh, cars yeah. and these nitro guys. Oh yeah, it's going to get loud. It's going to you just watch the tires increase, the whole car lift up. Well, it's and really you, cool. You can feel the palpitations in your heart, and you will find out you will rattle the fillings in your teeth listening to these things just the concussion and the power these things generate yeah. i don't know what the horsepower of these will be but a top fuel dragster funny car is putting out eleven thousand horsepower yeah it's basically like like you ever been watching top gun over the weekend it's i watched like, it i went and saw it yesterday <laughs> it's a it's a fun movie it is um that's like it, it basically you're when you get to these top field dragsters, it's like strapping into one of those, except it doesn't leave oh, yeah. the ground. That's really right. what we're well, talking about. They're pulling like seven G's, taking off, and when they pull a parachute, it's a negative eight G's. Yeah. I mean these these cars are going from zero to one hundred. Yeah. In one second. Yeah. It's it's amazingly 
Um, so, so when we talk about the drivers and stuff, it's 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 a it's a sport. You got to be in shape, and you got to right. You know, it, it's it's a workout when you're behind the wheels. It, it's you know, just like you talk about, like even like for NASCAR and stuff. You know, you're watching those races, you're like you know, are they out there? Yeah, you go 500 miles at 200 miles an hour for for three hours straight and see how you feel after that. Well, you know, and what, <laughs> what amazes me about those kind of cars is who can build a motor that'll run. 9,000 RPMs for 500 miles. Yeah. And use it the next race. Yeah. I mean, they, they freshen a little. I mean, the next night they're it, back doing it again. It's, a, yeah. it's amazing the mechanics and the, you know, the engineers these, yeah. these big teams have, of course. Of course, Draxers, it's like a, you're, you're kind of like, it's a different strategy. Is, is of the Ovals track, they're, they're, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. right. For Draxers, the complete opposite. You're trying to, basically shoot your whole wad in a quarter mile right and trying to put it all leave it all on the track so right so you're just it's it's not about i don't care what more power more whatever we can do to blow it to to shave off another tenth of a second off that time you we know? don't we nhra has a most most events are quarter mile uh they're finding out that the smaller tracks like ours we're going the eighth mile for a couple of reasons uh, the insurance so much cheaper uh, cars, cars don't go near as fast. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're finding we're, we're having a lot less, uh, accidents and I hated it at first, but I thought, okay, I'm using only half the fuel. <laughs> I'm wearing my motor out, you know, just half as much. Sure. And so, having just as much fun. And, ha- and nobody can play a trick with, you know, there's all kinds of tricks you can play when you're running a quarter mile because you got another eighth of a mile to, to do whatever you want. Uh, when you run an eighth of a mile, you better be on your game and and, and balls to the wall. Mm. Uh, there ain't no time. To... Yeah, because you, you blink, it's over. You're exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just by the time you're thinking about it, you done missed the whole race. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'd like to think we, we couldn't do this out there without the uh, like chance materials. They poured our concrete out there for us for on a racetrack, and they can do that for your home or business too. Right. So business, exactly. Uh, Tate them. Branch, uh, he's he supported us so much. Tate's an old drag racer. I was going to say, he's got, he's got some wheel time. He, is a, he was a professional drag racer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sunwest uh, uh, Refrigeration, that's okay. Roy and George. They're they're on the board. Uh, uh, Powell Tire, mm-hmm. they support us. Rock Auto, Candlewood Suites. Uh, they give us a tremendous deal on our out of town race. So a lot of your, a lot of your uh, drivers this week yes. are going to be setting yes. up shop out of Candlewood. So. They give us a tremendous rate. Uh, J and S mechanical, John, uh, Smith, or they, they have a, uh, oh, kind of an HVAC business. Uh, he's out there with us. Him and Sarah are out there every time we, we work. And then Davis Reynolds, they rent us sweepers and stuff all the time and so we we're, we're really blessed to have good people here that that want this track and uh will support it sure uh, and that's and really at the end of the day and i think when we're talking about you know the city and some of those issues there on whether we can keep this as the home for racing or or, or we're going to find a new home whatever right. that's going to be but but this 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 is one of those things where you, you know you groom it you be a part of it and and i think when you come out and support it, you're going to turn out, you're going to find, you're going to have some fun. Even if you don't know a thing about racing, that's the beauty of this. You don't have to be educated necessarily on what they're doing to come out and enjoy it. Because once it happens, you're going to watch a few races, you're going to get bit by the bug, and you're going to be like, this is really cool. And you talk to a driver, or talk to some of the people in the stands, and you start learning a little bit about it. Next thing you know, you're out the next weekend coming out and watching right. a race, too. And, and you that's can bring mom and dad's car out, you know, if you can. There you go. Uh, start out small. Yeah. Uh, another thing, if you need a job, we got jobs out there. You know, they're they're just for three or four nights a week, a month. Okay. But uh, we need we need uh, some people to help us out there. Well, and like you said, you you guys are you know just a couple of on weekends. You know, pouring concrete, right. laying things out. If if you'd like to get involved that way, we'd love the more hands make less work. So. All right, and, and this is for race night, and the, and we would really like to hire a new track manager. Uh, our last track manager uh, quit, okay. and he did a great job for us. Uh, we're Roy uh, Stevenson is our interim track manager right now, and uh, but he's a racer like me. Uh, I was having to work up at the tower, and Roy was running the track, and so that meant our cars were parked. But 
you know, the track comes first. Uh, if anybody's out there and has any experience and would like to be our track manager, let us know. We'll reach out. We'll, we'll, we'll reach out and come out and this weekend and exactly and, get and, a hold of me, Roy or, or George. Uh, we're easy to find. Good deal. And, uh, let us know. We'd we'd like to interview you and, and maybe be our new track manager. Absolutely. Lots of opportunities here if you want to get involved, either being hired or if you want to, you know, just even volunteer to help it on some of these things. And uh, I'm like you said, you're down to three members on the board here. So I imagine you could use a few board members to help with some of the decision making and, and execution of some of the plans here. Exactly. So uh, please, uh, if you're out this weekend, uh, out at the races, come talk to, to one of these guys here and, and let's see if uh, maybe... Who knows? This might be your next passion and labor of love here. Might for, be a new John Force waiting out there. You somewhere. never know. But again, come on out uh, tonight, tomorrow night. Uh, racing starts at seven uh, tonight. Uh, doors will open at six. Tomorrow, the gates will open at five. Racing starts at seven. Um, get there early, especially tomorrow night. Get there when it comes at five. I recommend you get there when the gates open five. That gives you a chance to walk the pits and kind of meet the drivers and and if they're busy getting ready for races you might want to just kind of stand back and let them watch but but there, if there's some downtime oh yeah go go shoot the ball Every, everybody guys. likes sh- you know oh and another thing uh real quick father's day uh we're putting on a car show at first united methodist church okay uh our pastors asked we did it last year if you got a hot rod and you want to come out or if you just want to come out and look at some uh, in the parking lot of the First Methodist Church, uh, 200 North Penn. Yeah, just a couple blocks On the Kentucky over. side. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a car show, and we'll have the hot dog guy there. Oh, great. Giving out hot dogs. So uh, come see some great, beautiful come, rides. Or, or, or bring your street car, bring your hot rod, bring your mom and dad's car. Mm, bring your old uh, uh, classic beauty, whatever. Anything. We'd love, love to have you there. Yeah. If it's a, a unique car. Come yes, bring it out absolutely. and have some fun with it. And let's, let's absolutely show it off and brag and talk a little bit. And, you know, especially even work in progresses. I love oh, when yeah. they come out oh, with yeah. those. We, yeah. I love, uh, I, I, every once in a while I'll go out to a car show and then you'll see a guy with like old 57 Chevy or something. It's kind of half restored. Right. I love those because you're right in the middle of seeing this, this beauty come back to life. And then the next bit. year nice. you go, he's finished with it and you go, wow. That's the same car. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is there any information, Rob, we, we didn't get a chance to talk about? No, other than just be be aware of the detour. Just go up, go south one more yeah. intersection and take that right there, uh, and, and it'll weave you around through that area down there, and it'll bring you back out on Wyo Road. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, if, and if you have questions, um, you can like and follow the uh, Alien City Dragway or Roswell Dragway. I think it's under both. Exactly. Um, they're on Facebook. Like and follow. You can learn more about this event and everything else going on. Yes. Plus, uh, things I, I was noticing the, the other day, I was looking through there, and you guys have, like, uh, you know, cars for sale, things like, you know, oh, just yeah. stuff like that. So if you're sure. looking for that kind of information, that's a good thing to follow. Sure. So you can stay uh, up to date on that kind of stuff too. Absolutely. So, and of course, if you have questions about anything, you shoot a message through there, and right. and somebody will get back to you. And that's probably the most efficient way to get that done. I'm thinking. So. Well, we we just hope everybody will come out and enjoy the races. If if it's your first time, you're going to walk away from there going, "Wow, that was crazy." Uh, it's a safe sport. We've had one accident out there in the last seven or eight years, and it it wasn't the track's fault. It was the driver's fault. Sure. He just let it get away from him. It happens. Uh, it does. I, I've come close so many a time <laughs> to smacking the wall, but yeah. you know you got to raise that right foot. Oh, the good news is because of the safety and stuff with some of these cars, you, it's not the driver you got to worry about. It's the money you're going to spend fixing oh, gosh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, this, that's the more disappointing part. A lot of this the time. guy hurt himself pretty bad, but he Did totally he? destroyed a beautiful race car. Oh man! And uh, uh, but well. Fun weekend. Hopefully, no one uh, no one wrecks them too bad out there, and has a great weekend. And we see, uh, who knows? Maybe you see a record breaking uh, track time or something oh, yeah. out there on uh, on Saturday, yeah. or, or tomorrow night, or tonight right. for that matter. Well, so Saturday night for sure. Yeah, we, we, definitely. Uh, we're just bring some earplugs. Uh, maybe some sun tan lotion. Yeah, especially sunscreen. for the early early evening, uh, it gets a little sunny and, out there. And but. some chairs and and a cooler full of 
uh, Cokes and yeah. water and just have a good time. Yeah. And then, like I said, uh, there's going to be food trucks and stuff. So Food truck here. You know, if you you want to picnic or whatever, but if you if you come hungry, they they got plenty yeah, of shame on for you, you for leaving hungry. Exactly. So, well, thank you, Rob. Appreciate you the bet. visit. And I uh, can't, can't wait to talk some more about uh, some drag racing and stuff with you. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll see you next time. All righty. It is uh, 8.